Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now this episode is one that in some ways I'd prefer to not make, but I have in the past, and you can check out my other videos on Cling Tidy and learning modern C++, strongly suggested that you go in and use Cling Tidy and turn on all of the warnings because you may as well learn from Cling Tidy. Now, I think uh, I'm going to have to change that advice now. So this episode is Cling Tidy Warnings to Disable. And we might have to get to a point where we're, uh, I'm only suggesting specific things to enable. And the problem from my perspective, my perspective as someone who produces these videos and does training, is if I tell you to enable all the warnings, then I expect with most static analyzers that all of the warnings are something that are very useful. But Clang Tidy is now getting a lot of very specific Google project warnings enabled in there. And I don't know uh, how all of this comes together, like how specifically checks get into Clang Tidy and who vets them and who allows whatever in. But we have here, and this is the list of all of the Clang Tidy checks that are available in Clang Tidy 8. And I am recording this in December of 2018. I know this changes often. But what we can immediately see is we have Absil specific checks, and Absil is a Google project. And then things that, you know, make sense. Android, okay, fine. If there's a best practice for use with Android, do those. And then bug prone checks, that's great. If there's something that is bug prone, we should probably avoid doing it. And scrolling down, we've got certs. Now, certs are awesome because these are known vulnerabilities with specific things in the language. So we should probably be following those certs so that we're not writing code that has more security problems. And then C++ core guidelines. These are well vetted across the community, almost all of them. And then we have Fuchsia. Now, Fuchsia is also a Google project. And we've got a set of very specific Fuchsia warnings. And then we've got the Google warnings. These are the ones that are specific, again, to Google projects. And this is the Google uh, C++ rules, uh, although this does not by far check for all of them. And then high CPP, these are high performance things. And they tell you about interesting things like conversions that you're not aware of, and perhaps if you're misusing push fact versus in place and whatever. So I, I do recommend most of the high CPP ones, although you might occasionally have to disable one or two. And then LLVM, those are specific to the LLVM project. MISC, you know, up to you. Modernize. Modernize are almost always great. There's a few that can get you in trouble, but for the most part, they can take our old style code and update them. We like the modernized checks. I always recommend to use them. I don't know anything about Objective-C. Then we've got performance, readability. You can, you know, disagree with some of the readability ones. But now the parts that I wanted to call out specifically are the ones that are specific to projects that you're not working on right now. You are probably, if you are watching this video, not an Absil developer. Now, some of those might be great, but they also might be highly specific to that project. And again, if you're watching this video right now, you are probably not a Fuchsia developer, and you are probably not a programmer at Google. So the rest of them, you know, be sure to use them freely, but I'll call out a couple of things that I find particularly problematic, if I may. Getting back to the Fuchsia ones. Fuchsia does not allow trailing return types. And uh, it says except for those using decal type specifiers. Now, I don't necessarily use trailing return types everywhere, but there is a good reason to use them in many cases. And of course, an exception must be made for lambdas because they have to be used in lambdas. So if you're looking for consistency in your code base, then um, it might be good to use trailing return types. So that's just outlawing them altogether. The 
Operator overloading uh, is completely disallowed in Fuchsia unless it is a assignment operator, which I, again, I find this not conducive to writing good clean C++. I know the arguments against operator overloading. However, we as a community have fully agreed that if we've got some type, take for example this right here with this operator plus, some type like a uh, numeric type or something or a matrix where operator plus has a well-defined meaning and we want to be able to add two operators together, we're not Java programmers. We don't do add matrix one comma matrix two. We do matrix one plus matrix two. So there's that. And then the next one that I find particularly troubling is the multiple inheritance unless they are all pure virtual base classes. This effectively makes using CRTP uh, impossible, and that's the curiously recurring template pattern. You can look that up if you don't know what it is. Now, I I'm exaggerating by saying it makes CRTP impossible, but it makes uh, other more interesting use cases for this kind of thing much more difficult than they need to be. So, so that's all. That's my, I hope, not uh, terrible uh, sh short rant here to just say, Keep using Clang Tidy. It's awesome. It's great. And I recommend almost all of them, but you probably want to start disabling the checks that are to specific projects that you are not currently a developer on. So thanks for uh, listening to this episode. There wasn't a whole lot to actually see programming wise here, um, but I hope you liked it. And uh, yes, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter.